Hi everybody, welcome to the judging stream of Dog Pit Jam 2018. Uh, I am your host and judge, Shibanya, and I am joined today by the rest of our judges who I'll let introduce themselves. Uh, hey, I'm Floppy Adult. Uh, I am a game dev and I also work for the Zam Network. Uh, and yeah, hi, glad to be here. Hey, I'm Sharp and Spoon. Yes, that's right. The Sharp and Spoon. <laughs> and I'm Snowshoe. I stream games and occasionally help in game devving. I'm currently learning Pico 8. Oh, I didn't know that. That's I, awesome. I, I know. <laughs> <laughs> cool. Uh, well, the first thing we're going to talk about is best audio. And I know that I wanted to mention, and I guess I'll just throw out what I want to mention, and we'll throw out what we want to mention and go from there. Uh, breakdown, Dungeon Profiteer, Magical Item Workshop, and Nalem. Is there any that I missed there that somebody else wanted to mention? For audio? Yeah. Uh, I did Super Giant Robot Cat Assembly. Is that All mentioned? Right. Uh, well, it's mentioned now. It is um. now. Sorry. I may have forgotten what you said. <laughs> well, let's let's go ahead and talk about that one first. Why did you nominate that one? Um, it's mostly just the original music score it was super great, and I, oh, yeah. they all have very satisfying, uh, re like reaction sounds, like kunk kunk, and then this like it had it had a very great environment sort of feel. But it but it was a little bit short. But I just really wanted like mostly it's the background music that was like a, -A okay number one. That's true. That game was really tight. I'm I sad to say that that one didn't immediately stand out to me, but that was really well done. Mm -hmm. uh, any thoughts on that? No, I mean it. It again, it, it didn't uh, kind of to mimic what you were saying, Shabanya. It didn't stand out to me, but I remember it being well done. Yeah. Cool. Um, and I'm just looking down the list we have. Um, Magical Item Workshop had super good audio. I think that's definitely a contender. I'm going to ignore the squeak, but aside from the squeak, um, had what squeak. By the way, I didn't. <laughs> I didn't hear a squeak. Which when build I was did playing. you play? I played the one that I downloaded it like May third, so it was uh, before we recorded. Uh, first... Hmm. I don't know, but the one I had, the one I played on stream, there was this constant squeak noise every time, like a mouse squeak type thing every time I huh. clicked a button, and it was just really annoying. Um, but I know System Log Off has since released a squeakless build, which I haven't played yet, so I might I wouldn't get. I, I think I only played the squeakless build, so <laughs> if that's I would probably yeah I'd probably say it was good. Yeah, I, I I found a lot of the, um, I found a lot of the clicking very like outside of your mouse squeaking issue. Like I found mm -hmm. it all very satisfying, and it was. Oh, yeah, it I like very responsive. I liked, yeah, yeah. I, I'm sorry. I also liked the. Uh, when we were building the spell, mm -hmm. um, the the background music was very satisfying as well. It didn't felt it didn't feel too repetitive. If yeah. I was there for a while. Oh, so. uh, the background music of that was delightful um, in every regard, and it had voice acting, which is fun. Um, yeah, that is fun. So that's definitely a top top contender. I want to look down. Um, Dungeon Profiteer. That was impressive for having voice acting. Um, yes. It's definitely worth a mention. I know it had music, and I remember listening to music, but it wasn't very memorable to me because I can't actually no, remember what that music yeah, was like. I can't like. either. <laughs> it wasn't memorable. I, I think I think I almost nominated Dungeon Profiteer for its, like, um, almost a quantity over quality, just <laughs> in terms of, like, being able to put meaningful sound in so many places. Like, I thought that was impressive for a jam game. Of course, it's because they had a large team, but I still thought it was notable for that reason. Mm -hmm. Although, I don't think... Did they have a sound effect that played when you attached something? I don't think they did. I almost want to no, take off points for that. Satisfying. Yeah, yeah. That would have been satisfying. Are you sure? Because I, I, I know there was one when you detached, and then there... I thought there yeah. was one when it... I thought it did it. I, I think I, I commented know. on it on the stream, but it's, it's definitely a solid effort, but it didn't stand out to me like Magical Item Workshop. Yeah. Um, then after that, Breakdown uh, had an excellent uh, score. It did. had a very, very good score, I thought. 
Uh, I thought it was very strong. It, so. It's funny. I liked Breakdown, but I don't remember the audio. <laughs> <laughs> it, it was one of the games I, I was like, I my judge games, but I also played it just willy nilly. And I'm like, it was really great and fun, but I can't remember the music. <laughs> it had a rock and tune going along with it. Yeah, maybe maybe that's just the thing. It's like I remember everything but the music because I was so focused mm -hmm. on the game. Right. And then uh, the last one I've got listed here is Nalem, which was fun in that uh, the little moles that you hit, they have a different audio clip for mm -hmm. what animation they're doing, and I thought right. that was really cute. That was... <laughs> yeah, that, that was cute. I agree. That was, that was a nice touch. The the 100th time you, you hit him and you hear the scream, though, um, <laughs> was a little yeah, disconcerting. It... Yeah. Well, as we found out for first-hand experience, that game was not meant to be played for 30 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, why not? If you really want to torture yourself. Spoon, I haven't heard from you on this. You want to weigh in? I I don't have a lot to contribute on this one because uh, I'm not great with audio, and I think that, that this one, the, the audio was a little more subtle than I, I'm, like, good at describing. So I know I, I, know I enjoyed the breakdown music. Um, I know I enjoyed the the... What was it? Um, the Dungeon Profiteer, obviously, um, but I don't have too much. I don't have too much to contribute here, except for what's already been said. Yeah. Well, following this discussion, I would put forward a motion to give best audio to Magical Item Workshop. How do we feel about that? Hmm. Really? I, I I will not dissent, mm -hmm. but what would you? I I I really 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 liked Breakdown Score. That's true. Um, but. I'm also that. I mean, I don't want to bury the lead, but I, I think Breakdown is definitely eligible for some other stuff. So I'm kind of in the mode of like, eh, like maybe I, I'm I'm okay with conceding it to something else. Well, I mean, I, I see. I booted up uh, Magical Item Workshop. It has some pretty pretty nice sounds. I forgot about all these subtle little sound effects. Yeah, mm -hmm. it is responsive. I I kind of forgotten about that, and that's really true. Well, what do we think about Magical Item Workshop for the winner and Breakdown as the runner-up? I'm okay, okay with, that. with that. Yeah, All right. Definitely. Thanks. <laughs> so, the next one we're looking at is Best Writing. Um, mm -hmm. And since we've all got this list, uh, we'll just go mentioning everything down in order. Uh, first, we've got written here is Quest in Progress. Yeah. Uh, that one was really cute. That writing's a very strong one in that game, too. Yeah, I was very charmed by the writing of mm -hmm. that game. I, I think um, uh, we can we can talk a little bit about. Well, I mean, I, I'll I'll just go ahead and weigh in. I, I think what really charmed me about Quest in Progress was it lured me into thinking that it didn't really follow the jam prompt for mm -hmm. the first like you know minute and a half of playing it. I was kind of like, all right, this is just some Zelda like and with some rogue like qualities or whatever and i'm like mm. um but i really love the play on what a workshop could be and i thought that was a really nice reveal and i think the different styles of writing between the dialogue and the actual in-story thing were really um really well done so i i would heartily nominate that for sure the the um the writing for the the female character was mm -hmm. like charmingly bad i hope yeah. it was intentional i'm, I'm pretty it sure was. it was yeah yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. <laughs> but yeah, it was great. Like as a as a strong independent <laughs> woman, I'm like, oh yeah, this sounds like a man writing a woman for sure. Right. Yeah, wasn't the guy's um workshop partner a woman? Yeah. Yes. So yes. she's reading this yes. being like, hmm. <laughs> uh hey, right, yeah, yeah. So, so I thought that was very charming. I, I liked that a lot. Um, kind of a yeah. clueless ding dong. I'm like, yeah, this sounds this sounds like a lot of clueless ding dongs I know, so this is good. <laughs> It made yeah. me laugh the um the the end where he's like uh, uh oh I had to cut out half of it almost as sort of a, a meta commentary about <laughs> how I ran out of time like that was you know well done hey I see what you did there <laughs> yeah um and I I think I I would say that it's maybe the only game that kind of had a, a overall narrative but yeah. I guess I guess a couple did but well. Uh, well, Ash, do you have anything else to say about that before we talk about Mechanical Workshop Zeta? Because I've got something to say about that in uh, response. Yeah, I'm mostly in agreement with everyone. Like, it, mm -hmm. it really kind of subverted 
it, you were really your expectations of what was going to happen. So it was a nice surprise. And I, I, it was one of the few that I thought would have a really great potential for a, like going beyond the jam. Yeah, definition. sure. It felt yeah. like there was more that could have happened because it's a, it's a really fun uh, meshing of like a visual novel, choose your adventure, and then having the adventure. Mm-hmm. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yep. So yeah, you gotta love a game that integrates narrative with gameplay. Yeah, so I thought they did a really good, really good job on that. Oh yeah. Um, I was gonna mention Mechanical Workshop Zeta because that game did have an arc to it. Yep, I, I take it all back. <laughs> You're totally right. Uh, I think that game had a very charming narrative in the fact that the the narrative was cliche and unoriginal as hell, and that's why it was so charming. <laughs> oh my god! And I... cat people. <laughs> Is because it was you know your bog standard like shonen giant fighting robot protagonist story. Um, I don't think it was as rich or deep as Quest in Progress, but it was a lot of fun. <laughs> it was, and there was a lot of it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, which is isn't necessarily good on its own, but like it was a lot of like you know pretty good to good stuff, um, and yeah. that's really impressive for ten days. Yeah, mm-hmm. yes. it hit all the right yeah. beats. Yeah. Yes. I yeah. liked that it was a, uh, uh, what do I, I, I like the workshop mechanic disguised with the visual novel aspect, because the, the problem with a lot of visual novels is that it's like a lot of reading mm-hmm. without a lot of action, and this one really blended the the action with the, with yeah. the novel, and it, it kept you wanting to keep going versus just like, oh my god, am I done, am I done, am I done, am I done, right, am I done? Right, right. Yeah. Yeah, it was really clever. I mean, the version I played didn't even let me interact during the battle segments, and I still found it charming. I also broke my game. I <laughs> I accidentally started playing without armor. <laughs> I played oh with God. no armor, and I made wow. it all the way to the end. Really? I just completely <laughs> broke it. Wow. Like, oh my God, we're so we're winning. And I'm like, yeah, as a skeleton. <laughs> One thing I want to point out to it is that it's easy to make a game that is a pastiche on a genre that hits all the right beats and everything. Uh, but that kind of does so in a way that's sort of snobby or mocking. But what I liked about it is it it was done in a very loving way. You could tell that it was a love letter to these animes and stuff. Right. Um, yeah. So it was good. Um, after that, in this list, we've got Dungeon Profiteer. Uh, yeah, I, th- I think that did a good job with kind of um, some pithy writing, some kind of <laughs> you know snappy snappy dialogue. I think like. It sometimes uh, leaned maybe too heavy into, okay, how can I inject humor into, like, literally every line, which, you know, it doesn't always work, but I think in terms of kind of the premise of, like, you're trying to get these people not to die from building weapons, I thought it was uh, pretty good in terms of um, uh, just kind of pithy dialogue. I liked it. It was cute. I think the strength in that game is less in a narrative arc and more in just world building and creating mm-hmm. these characters. That's exactly yeah. what I was thinking. Because uh, yeah, I loved all sure. those characters and I want to learn more about them. Yes, totally. It's like, why do they keep coming back to me? <laughs> <laughs> right. No, that was great. I liked I liked Dungeon Rock Fear. The only problem I had was uh, it might have just been more like a UI thing because uh, my mouse is broken and I mm-hmm. double click through dialogues. So I'm like, oh shit, I don't know what I'm building. Uh, just cobble together. <laughs> and it didn't, it didn't quite matter as long as like I had the one thing that mattered, which was magic. <laughs> <laughs> so that, but beyond that, the writing was really funny. Uh, I enjoyed it. Yeah. Thoughts on that spoon? I I agree. I I wasn't as hooked as you guys were with uh, that writing, um, but sure. that might be because I've been playing a lot of D and D, and so I'm like, okay, yeah, this this all seems. Yeah, stupid. yeah, yeah, yeah. So maybe that's a good thing. Like it seemed normal. <laughs> yeah, maybe. Yeah, maybe. Yeah, I can see that as a, a pro or con, but I know what you mean, yeah. though. Uh, let's talk about Pictomancer. Ooh, that yes. Let's. <laughs> Has anyone seen the ending to this? No, I, I didn't. No, <laughs> I have to admit that I, I have not, no. I didn't make it past puzzle three or four, it, where you're drawing people. It had yeah, a really good cool story up to where I played, though. Yeah. Did, did you guys see the, um, the, the like, you're making tanks, or, or the you, you create gold so that they can buy a bunch of super tanks for their war? You should just describe it instead of asking us if we've seen it, because the folks watching the stream may not have seen it. 
Fair enough. Um, so at the end, uh, you create a bunch of gold in order to create <laughs> a bunch of super tanks for a war that they're starting. And the person's like, oh, no. Uh, well, she didn't uh, know she like, the money was for war. Right. She was like, oh, my God, what have I done? And right. everyone died. And then I think, <laughs> I think the next puzzle was her bringing people back to life. Is it? I, I, I think yeah. so, because I started doing it. I'm like, I see people, but then I kept failing because you only yep. get three chance. You get three. Oh, I should have sent you the spoiler images that Seton sent me. Oh, Share yes. them now. Right meow. All... What? Um, I said right meow. I mean, that okay. puzzle is brutal. I know. Right? Yeah, it's pretty tricky. Um, it was I cute. Love to cross, but I almost <laughs> wanted to start taking notes. <laughs> that's that's what I did for Magical Item Workshop. I actually wrote shit down, <laughs> so I didn't have to go back into the menu. Uh, so we've talked about everything that's been nominated. Um. I would... Oh, we did Magical Item Workshop. Yeah. Did we mention writing? I thought it was... Oh, my, that's right. Magic... Shoot, you're right. That had, that was cute. It uh, That game was definitely cute for the names of the weapons and the little scenarios. Uh, I think the narrative didn't stand out to me as much as the others. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Even though it had an ending. It has six different endings, I think. No. Oh, yeah. Did yes. anyone get anything besides the golden ending? No, there's six endings? Wow. <laughs> I well, didn't know that. Artistic. I got the worst ending, of course. But <gasps> you did? I think I think it's where the you, everybody dies because of a comet hitting the town or something. I didn't. I didn't have them die. They all live because okay. I'm <laughs> very good at very good at games. I mean, what? I think <laughs> yeah, it's it's definitely got a narrative. I think one thing that didn't that made it stand out less to me was just because the main character is you, so it's just cipher that they don't really have much of a personality, which is not really a flaw, but it's a well, right. it was generic, kind yeah. of like how victim or how a dungeon profiteer was. Yeah, yeah, that's true. Boiler plate, not a horrible thing though. Oh, super oh. cute, and I love the names of the things like the sward. <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Sward. <laughs> um, is there is there a name for like? It's not necessarily like good narrative, but it's like clever writing and naming of things because whatever whatever the word that is. I mean, that's writing. <laughs> I mean, it's writing. I mean, we, you know, it's not narrative. Which yeah, this is best right. narrative. It's best. It's best writing. That's what the category is. Yeah, for sure. I, just, I can't. There's, there's got. To be, anyway, whatever adjective that is. Oh, super snappily done. Well designed. Yeah. Um. So let's start thinking about who we think should win. I. Would quest in progress. Think yes. Quest in progress would be what I would think would win. What do you guys think? I. I also liked quest in progress. Yes. Um, yeah, because it, it felt like it, like I said, it had the most going for it that you're like, oh, I kind of want to see where this is going. I yeah, I yeah, I I think I think in terms of building something that I would like to see the dev ex, uh, expand upon, almost solely based on the writing, I I would say that's the winner for me for sure. Awesome. So let's say the winner is Quest in Progress. Um, and who would we nominate as a runner-up? I thought Mechanical Workshop Zeta. That was pretty strong. Oh, God, that, right. That was a good runner-up. Yeah. Yeah, I'm okay with that. Do you keep uh, forgetting Floppy at all? <laughs> no, that's not, that's not me. I'm, I'm, I remember everything. Uh, no, someone... that's me. That's me. Oh, that was it's, I think it's, 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 it's my it's, game, too. Like... It's soon <laughs> that's having revelations. <laughs> it's, you get to my... enjoy them all over again. Yeah. My mind is rebelling against the fact that I enjoyed a mech catboy <laughs> visual novel game so much, but like I loved that game so much. Um, is there anything to be said for the fact that like Quest in Progress was an unfinished story versus same uh, kind of workshop that it I was thought not? That was the bit. I thought that was the whole point. Unless he says that in his. I think it's that uh, Clay took the limitations of the the jam and worked it into the bit. Okay. So it's a yeah. yes and no. <laughs> Yeah, okay. I mean, it's like, I, I could go either way of saying, like, you know, wh how cool would it have been to be able to wrap something up in so little time, but at the same time, if the intention is, let's see how this jam goes so I can decide if I want to expand on it, I understand why uh, they would leave it open. Uh... I feel like we can, I mean, I feel like the, the princess and the, the, the knight never actually met, so I mean... 
Yeah, that's true. That, that couldn't have been by design, right? It is an incomplete narrative, but it's a very well done one and a clever one that works with the game. Okay, I'm 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 okay with that. I I did love Mechanical Workshop Zeta. I just uh, want to put that out there. I loved it too. Uh, I'm I'm super uh, good with Mechanical Workshop Zeta as runner up. Yeah, yeah. Definitely. Oh, for yeah, for sure. I mean, either. Either way, either order we want to do it, I'm okay with that. But I think those two are, I think, very strong, for sure. Well, if, if you want to argue order, now is your chance if you think Mechanical Workshop Zeta ought to be the winner with runner-up Quest in Progress. Quest in Progress had, uh, kind of like you said, it may be more unique or more original writing, I guess. If, if I, Since you're forcing me to choose, I think, Quest in Progress. <laughs> Yeah. Gun to your head. <laughs> I That's... mean, it's a it's a bubble making gum gun. You, you know, <laughs> bubble gum gun. Yes. I would. Yeah. All right. <laughs> uh, yeah. Question for us. Okay. <laughs> so let's look at best art. This is going to be a tough one because there's a lot of really good art in this jam. Oh uh, my god. So I'm just so going to go down our list, and the first one on the list is Space Crafters. Yeah. Uh, you nominated this snowshoe. Tell us why. I think I was the only one that nominated. <laughs> um, I I just thought it it was it was really well done. It was very simple. It's space theme. Uh, I just thought a lot of the pixel art was really solid, and I could clearly discern between all of the objects. And the background was you know space. Um, and then the menu items were really easy to read as well. Because uh, I think that was all. Uh, uh, maybe it wasn't. I thought it was handwritten pixel art, but it, they probably just found something. But I mean, the key thing was that it's very. I could I could tell the difference between everything, and then it was easy to figure out. Yes, yes, yes. It's like good art direction. Yes, yeah. that's the word. Thank you. Yeah, it was the yeah, kind that's... of game where the art never got in the way. Yeah. yeah, that's fair enough for sure. They had mixed pixel sizes, though. Internet janitor would would be shaking his head. I was seriously going to say that exact thing. <laughs> yeah. Mixed sizes? Um, mixed, like, pixel art resolution sizes. It, it, we have a friend who would... Well, anyway. It was, he, it was noticeable. It was noticeable <laughs> for me, too. It was. Uh, if you look at um, the, the screenshot um, yeah. of, like, the menu, and then, like, look at the, the fonts versus, like, the ship's pixels versus, like, the border pixels, and all of them are at different scales... Um, oh, really? But oh, I, was... I guess I didn't notice. I thought the, the pixelated workshop was very charming. Uh, but yeah, we're being very nitpicky, but we're like, oh, we could see that mixed resolution well, pixel art. <laughs> yeah, if we if we have a bunch of nominees, I mean, it it, it, it we probably ought to be picky. So, <laughs> um, we can, did you play you know. it? Did you play it full screen? I think this was the uh, this was a download one. Maybe maybe once that full screen, it's way more noticeable because I just played it at regular size. Yeah, and also we probably notice it more because we are game devs and we get snobby about things. Yeah. <laughs> Fair enough. I mean, design is my background as well, so it's because it's IJ broke I us. Would notice. Because IJ broke us, basically. Yes. <laughs> uh, yeah. For those who don't know, it's almost like a running gag about this. So, in our community. <laughs> so it that it, space crafters was very well done, but that was the thing is it was competent. The art didn't get in the way, but it didn't stand out to me either. So let's talk about super. Uh, the, the, the parallax on the stars was also really cool. That's true. It's very cute. Anyway, yeah. Uh, super giant robot cat assembly. This one looked fantastic. Yes. Yeah, it did. It did. All, it did. All the designs were just top notch. Also, there are little animated kitties in the workshop. Yeah, that's yeah. <laughs> I I I didn't play this one like as hard. I kind of watched on stream, uh, but yeah, you're right. The kitties are amazing. Anytime you have animated cats in a game, I'm like, all right, like <laughs> this is like Monster Hunter World is almost like good because of the cats in the game. So, um, this yeah. one had really good art direction too, in terms of UX, and it. It's a very small game. It doesn't have a lot in it, but what is in it is implemented perfectly. Yes. P pandering to the judges. 
Well, and it was actually a <laughs> crowd favorite as well. Yeah. They were like, oh my god, pixel art is amazing. <laughs> and it didn't exactly have mixed pixel art resolutions. <laughs> 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 that I could see, anyway. Uh, let's talk about... Oh, Magical Item Workshop. That was a very pretty game. Yes, it yes. was. Yeah. It, it was a very... It, it reminded me of, like, a really, really solid SNES game. Um... I don't know. I, I thought it was vibrant and um, just well-defined borders on on all the 2D art, and I don't know. I liked it a lot. It, I kept expecting it to be too busy because there's a lot mm-hmm. of elements going on. There's a right. lot of stuff going on, but it it, it did it, it did it pretty well. Yeah. Um, I the uh, the newer version, or no, the the submitted version, I think, has uh, the colorblind mode, which I I guess would would uh, be considered here, right? Yeah, I, th- I mean, I think so. I mean, mm-hmm. I think you could argue that's a that's a best dev thing as well. But I think it's yeah, a definitely bit of bring a... it up then, spoon. Okay. Uh... But but I think that I think that matters though in best art. I mean, yeah, especially the ability to take your palette and take your elements and be able to make it. You know, you're thinking about that stuff ahead of time, and I think that's really special. So mm-hmm. yeah. I liked, I appreciate, yeah, as you said, there were a lot of moving things in it, but I never felt overwhelmed. It right. had a very unified palette, like these mm-hmm. warm browns and stuff that made it feel, uh, I don't know, very cozy. Yep. Um, and it had uh, nice animated backgrounds, which I always appreciate. Yes. Um, very solid in those regards. And it also, it mixed 3D art with the 2D sprites, but it looked good. It did. Did it? Yeah. Was that what was the 3D? Uh, the objects you make? Oh. Yeah, at the end it like they move a little bit. Oh, okay. Right? That makes yeah, much that's true. sense. Yeah. It's the last screenshot on the page if you want an example. Yeah, mm-hmm. I just I was I was going to comment on how good those were and um I'm like, wow, someone took a ton of time making those sprites. <laughs> right. Makes um, a, lot more, a lot more sense. <laughs> most of the games by System Logoff I've played have art that he did in Blender, um and he's always done a pretty good job of integrating 2D with 3D without it being awkward and weird. Right. It fooled me. <laughs> this is very well done. Fooled. Um, Al. I also. Oh, yeah. Oh, and also, just like as far as character creation, I think the character creation for the art is is also kind of like a plus, just because they had to take the time to make all of those assets. Yep. Yeah, mm-hmm. that's a that's a big having having dabbled in character creation. It's one of the most art intensive things you can really set yourself up for. So that was well done. Yeah, that was impressive. Um, let's talk about alchemy a bit because alchemy that game is very stylish. That game, I keep I keep looking at that game and thinking that it stole assets from like some large, you know. <laughs> game that's been developed for more than ten days, like that. That, that art looks great. Yeah, it's super slick. Uh, it's very charming. You you know what all the all like um, the ingredients when they're when they're on the floor, uh, they, you can uh, tell the difference between them very well. Um, the enemies don't really blend into the background. It's great art direction. The the UI doesn't get in your way, even though there's a lot of it. Um, it's it's very easy to use the. The actual UX is really good on the journal, on the brewing. Um, it's just a really, really well polished uh, uh, game in terms of art. Yeah, I'm kind of going back through my notes, and, and it for whatever reason I didn't list it, but I I agree. I mean, like, I think I think especially with um, such a minimal palette, like what you're working with, um, in terms of kind of what you're trying to display, um, it's just a lot of stuff like you said yeah. and they they that can get out of hand like so fast yeah. and um they kind of did hit a kind of a perfect balance of that stuff so i i definitely think it should be nominated for this for sure mm-hmm. and similar to my comment about um magical item workshop this game has a very clear color palette it's a lot of like desaturated mm-hmm. uh earth mm-hmm. tones and it really i feel like helped contribute to it's had this very relaxing, almost like Minecrafty feel to it in that regard. Yeah, right. Yeah, it's easy. It's just really easy on the eyes. Yeah. Mm-hmm. 
Another E. And uh, let's see. Snowshoe, you nominated Spacecrafters twice. You must twice. have really, really liked it. I loved it. it. Uh, <laughs> oh, I, I think I wanted to move it up the list. <laughs> so that, no, hold on. I wanted to move it, my bad. Just because it, it's one of those that's like not one of the <laughs> nominated anywhere else so i was like oh let's get that let's talk about it first and all right can... uh <laughs> the next one i think this is the last uh one in this list is dungeon profiteer uh that game had so much art and so much really good looking art it was really everywhere though because like there was like three different art styles going on yeah which which so i, I would say this about it is I I sometimes really like like early era PlayStation 1 games did this a lot where they were trying to show off like certain aspects of the hardware but they would mix like competencies of actual art <laughs> like art, like it was so charming and reminded me of that so much that I think I was like this is taking me back and like if I'm really objective about it there is a tackiness to it which i i admit is not for everybody but for some reason that combination of things i was like okay i feel like i rented something that um like none of my friends played in 1997 at blockbuster <laughs> and i'm playing it on my ps1 and it's like it's like a riot but it's like really obscure and i look for long plays of it on youtube because i forgot about it like that kind of thing um, so I think I think like that's kind of what it reminded me of. So I, I'm not I don't have like a strong opinion of it versus some of the other things that we've discussed, but that's definitely why I nominated it. It was kind of a probably by necessity to combine that stuff for for you know the team for that short of amount of time, but like there was something kind of charming about it for me. Yeah, I, I adored it. Um, there's just so much like really charming art in it and attractive character designs in the sense of, like, I want to keep looking at them. I want to see them again. Yeah, the 2D designs were really, really strong. Um, I agree with that, for sure. If you take any one of the parts by itself, it might yeah. have, like, in my mind, it, it might win, but but combining them together, like, <laughs> yeah. It's, it, it's a mess. Like, it, it, yeah. it's, a, it's a mess I liked, but it is a mess. I totally agree. I... Mm -hmm. I don't know. I didn't find that to be a detriment because the 2D styles, in my opinion, were close-ish enough. Um, also, my mind... Well, and this this isn't policy. This is just me. Like, if we're going to start taking points off for that, like, we should take points off of, you know, some other game because the walk, you know, the walk cycle didn't go in all directions or something like that. Well, I mean, it, for me, it's like... A, especially the battle sequence combines this, um, this kind of, like, super high-tech, unreal um, art plus the, the charming 2D sprites, plus the 3D uh, weapons. Yeah, the, like um, the particle and, effects, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> and, and it's just all different, but then, like, meshing, and, like, it, it you know, it does it well in terms of, like, the game. It, it doesn't detract from the game, but in terms of just looking at art, I don't know. Yeah, yeah, I I, I can go there with that. I, I, I do. I mean, like... I think I think it is a really strong game. I feel less strongly about it winning for some sort of art award, honestly. Yeah. Uh, I realized that because I was confused by spacecrafters being put in here so many times, I saw what you did. Uh, we didn't talk about Quest in Progress. Uh, yeah. Um, I don't know. It was competent. Um, which like now that I'm like looking at some of the other nominees i'm like well I, is competent really good enough for this but um i definitely like the the art style of the two protagonists the actual irl protagonists um mm -hmm. and there was something and, and if if i i might be giving the dev too much credit but you know what i'm just gonna go for it if the if the writing of the in-game stuff was kind of trite and like boneheaded but on purpose there is a derivativeness of the art style that I also kind of read as being on purpose, which like I kind of appreciated. So that's mm -hmm. that's kind of where I am on that one. Yeah, because I think Clay did all of the sprites in that. Um... Yeah, I hope it I hope it was kind of like that on purpose, and I wasn't just like unbelievably rude. But I <laughs> I thought I thought the kind of like oh this looks like Zelda, like very much like Zelda, like super super like Zelda. I was like, oh, okay, this is on purpose because the writing kind of does the same thing. So, I don't know. 
I, I bet I I wouldn't be surprised if it was on purpose because the the like visual novel cutscene type thing was beautiful. Were, mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. And, also, and I've seen other style. I've seen other tile sets by Clay, so I know he's capable of making tiles sure. that are very original. So I I want to think it's on right. purpose. Yeah. Um, I would and also that I, that, I don't want to I don't want to take away from like the enemy sprite work, which I actually thought was really strong. Um. Anyway, sorry. Go ahead. Oh, which one? Me or... Yeah, you. I, th- I think oh. I started to yell right no, when you started to say something. Don't worry about it. It was. It re- clearly felt on purpose because the way the story was written, it was he start. It was supposed to be very generic. Right. And, like it wasn't good, so therefore going to a style that you're familiar with. So yes. it's like the the game wasn't the game. The game was just the the thing that was driving the story that we was making, so that we could have like a visual input. Like totally. Yeah. Because like the game, there was no game. There was just the story that he was the character Stephen was writing. Right. Mm-hmm. Um, I really like the art on that. I don't know if that one would be the winner. Let's talk about what we would pick as the winner in this category. Yeah, this That's one tough. might be tough. This might be a debate. Yeah, there's a lot of really good stuff in here. Yeah. Um. um... Well, let's just make a list, and then we'll just kind of whittle it down again. Well, um... So we had Alchemy, and Mechanical Workshop, Ma- Let's Beta. see. If I had to pick a top three, my top three would be, in no order, uh, Super Giant Robot Cat Assembly, Dungeon Profiteer, and Magical Item Workshop. I would put alchemy in there somewhere. I, I I feel pretty strongly about that because even though again I didn't list it, I'm kind of revisiting my notes and kind of like looking at the screenshots and, and remembering what I played and like it being so clear with a lot going on that takes a really confident hand. I think. Mm. Um, so I I don't I would feel pretty strongly about that. I don't know what it would supplant in my mind. Well, but... we don't, we can have a top four. Let's let's just let's let's just have a top eight. Let's <laughs> just have a top <laughs> ten. Um, just get them all of them. Yeah. Every every single one. GG. No winners, <laughs> but GG. <laughs> um. Oh, did we talk about the art in Mechanical Workshop Zeta? See, your spacecrafters thing threw me off completely. I got confused. Look, I it's you know, <laughs> I am uh, not. I, I take no responsibility. We didn't talk about that one. That one had a lot of really slick uh, mecha art in it. Yes. It did. It did. It did. I like slick mecha art. That's true. The mechs were really well designed. The illustrations for the our, our protagonist and antagonist were nice. <laughs> um... I don't think it stands out to me as much as the others, even though the mech art was really impressive because it wasn't like the the cohesion of everything was not as impressive as something like Magical Item Workshop, where there's just sort of zazz and style oozing from every screen. Right. But the mech art is really, really impressive. It is. I mean, they know it too because the uh, the credits just showed off like a, <laughs> a gallery of everything. All right, I'm That's not, tough. I'm not missing anything else, am I? <laughs> so you have al- alchemy, magical item. No, I think you're fine now. All right, so my top four, and this is just my my top four would be yeah, alchemy, robot cat assembly, magical item workshop, and dungeon profiteer. Not in that order. Just come randomly. Uh, so somebody's got to put forward what they who they think should win so we can argue about it. Alright, alchemy. I disagree. I think it's a pretty game, but somehow I feel like I I found the other ones more uh, charming or pleasing in some way. Yeah, I'm, I I probably agree with that. Uh, magical Item Workshop? Oh, we're just... Whoa! Um, I know, I know. <laughs> I, I tricked you. You tricked me. I mean, no, I, I have, like, a top three in mind. Well, what are your top... What's your top three? Uh, Alchemy, Magical Item Workshop, and, honestly, Dungeon Profiteer, but not necessarily in that order. Okay. 
I think that would be my exact top three, actually. Um, yeah, that would be mine too, I think. Mine ended up... I, I, th I think I would have to say, if... I feel weird doing... I, I would probably pick Alchemy, but if we can't agree Alchemy, I don't think it should be Dungeon Profiteer. So by process of elimination, I guess I would put forth Magical Item Workshop as the winner. What do you think, Sushu? Well, I'm also conflicting because of Best of Jam stuff. Because, right. well, whatever... I, I assume whatever is our runner-up will probably... You That's know, right. Become the new winner. If, uh, best of Jam win. winner can't win more than one thing. Or yeah. If they win Best of Jam, they don't win anything else because that's the yeah. big one. So whoever is runner up, uh, if they won the best of something else, does get promoted. Yeah. Um, so that's why. That's so I'm slightly conflicted because I why? I really liked Alchemy, and I think it had very. Uh, I think I believe it was Floppy Doll or Sharp and Spoon. You had a very a very good description of like the UI and UX and just all the art really was solid together and like I would see that as like best art but I could also see that as like best I was leaning my top two are Magical Item Workshop and Dungeon Profiteer and the reason why I was leaning against Alchemy um was it was not a game I wanted to like how do I phrase this? Now, I need to justify why I would <laughs> not pick it. Um, it did... Nothing stood out at me as, like, a super neato design that I'd just like to stare at for a while, I guess. <laughs> I, I, I would I would like strongly argue that if an art style is not your deal, I don't think you have to have, like, an objective reason why. Like, it just, <laughs> you know, it's like... I mean, I'd say if it just doesn't please your eye, like then that's that's okay. I don't think it has to have a reason not to. So, like, I, I think that's totally valid. Yeah, and I mean, I I I actually a little bit agree with that. It's just that, like, um, that is a game that should not have worked in a jam. Um, <laughs> yeah, like yeah. there's so much stuff going on, that's and true. I think, I think the only thing that brings it together is like the art direction and the UX and, and, right. and all of that design is right. really well thought out. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there was an impressiveness in its simplicity. I, I agree. I'm okay with it not being alchemy. Yeah. But, um, yeah. That's that that is my my pitch for it. Um well, there is also there's mm -hmm. also super giant robot cat assembly which had really great sprites. Uh beyond the sprites uh I don't know if that really qualifies it for more than runner up. You're you're a judge, so whatever you think is qualified is qualified. Oh, um, I know. It, it had really attractive art. It did not um, grab me like so. My top two magical item workshop and dungeon profiteer really grabbed me with something, um, and that's my subjective taste. You enter a jam with judging, you get to get subjected to subjective taste. Hmm. Yeah. Not all art has to be utilitarian. <laughs> um, hmm. I don't know. It's just uh, we might have to keep pondering this for this like, one's tricky. Minutes. Oh. Especially because Quest in Progress had, you know, it had a nice blending of two worlds, and I thought that was really clever. Quest in um. Progress just didn't... Yeah. It it doesn't stand out to me like my top two. Mm -hmm. But it had really, really good art. Shoot, this is a tricky one. Um, I'm trying to think about what I would pick if I was going to pick a winner. Uh, I would personally say, like, they're, you know... Uh some of the reasons why alchemy worked so well are also reasons that magical item workshop worked well in terms mm -hmm. of there are a lot of elements but the ui is is skilled enough that it never really felt cluttered um mm -hmm. but it also had a color palette that may have been a little more pleasing to mm -hmm. to i think the eye so that's a good point i, I think i think in, i think in that way there was a cohesiveness and a technical skill and a color palette that was pleasing in a lot of areas, and therefore I would probably say that should be number one. I I agree. I think a lot of the things that Al Alchemy did a lot of things really really well, and it's really really good. But Magical Item Workshop did those things and possibly better in terms of UX. Yeah, and, and I and I think I do know what you mean about like oh when I glance at a screenshot or when I remember playing it, like I felt cozier and happier playing 
magical item workshop than alchemy yeah. just from an artistic perspective so there's a little bit of that like you know subjectiveness to it which which uh i don't know i think that I don't know. I think that's no, art is very me. subjective. Yeah. yeah, of course. Yeah. So, what do we why think? we're having this big debate? <laughs> uh, right. Winner, uh, what do we think about Winner Magical Item Workshop? I'm I'm good with that. Okay, yeah, me I'm too. okay with that. All right. So now for the runner Run up. Uh, yeah. For me, it's between Alchemy and Dungeon Profiteer. Yeah. I would support Dungeon Profiteer, but I am ready to hear arguments to the contrary. Uh, I feel like we've argued uh, plenty for alchemy. I'd like to hear your arguments for <laughs> Dungeon Profiteer. Yes, I agree. Yes. My argument for Dungeon Profiteer rests on the character art. Uh, it's just so cute. So many cute designs um, and pleasing designs and characters I remember really well. Um, and it did a lot to create a world that like, I want to go back to and you know, part of the strength of its writing or narr is that it didn't really have much of a narrative going, but it had this story of like, these characters have their own lives that happen when you're not looking at them, which makes it feel right. more real. So, you know, it's, it's a fun kind of story where the protagonist is not the center of the universe. Um, and so these people have wants and needs in a day that they go about. Um, and so the art really sold that. Uh, and there are just a lot of great touches. All the artists did such a good job and I'm remembering uh, one of the enemy designs I think by Clay was like some kind of troll who had like little tiny mushrooms growing on him and he had like the imp girl who was super cute and her tail was a heart like she was a succubus kind of thing um, mm -hmm. and then there was a guy I found out later was a living beard <laughs> oh is that the little short dude yeah <laughs> oh okay oh. That's what he was. yeah we were wondering if he was a terrier but it turns out he was just a living beard <laughs> well that makes more sense <laughs> A living beard, it makes total sense. Um, so to me, that, that did a lot. The art did a lot to sell me on, like, wow, this is a world I want to spend time in. I, I, I'm not mad at it. <laughs> I, I'm okay. I'm okay with that. I think, like, if I may, I feel like mm -hmm. I kind of caught you describing why Dungeon Profiteer is a really good overall game, but maybe yeah. not, like maybe not the best art just in kind of like you're describing a lot of stuff that i think the game did but the art didn't do those things for me Fair like enough. so i mean obviously obviously like it's a, <laughs> it's a subjective thing but it's like i'm like yeah i think they did do a good job world world building but i'm like i don't know if it was the art that did it for me but maybe i don't know it, it, it might have been for you obviously so as she got butts well, I, I, the only thing I truly liked was, that, like, as far as characters, was that they used the character assets from when they came in the store to the battlefield. So there was, yeah, like, that was Moody. Nice. I thought yeah. that was clever, but it yeah. didn't. The, the blending of the styles just. I almost wish that they could have had a little extra time to like solidify that with the what were they using unreal uh -huh. yeah mm -hmm. yeah it had a little extra time to mesh that better with the unreal art assets because those were those were pretty nice yeah and I, I, I don't want to argue against it really because i still really liked it so i don't i don't know it's it's tough well it's it a tough one it sounds like what i'm hearing from y'all is y'all want to have runner up as alchemy that's that's what i'd like I would I would say so because there is a the, yeah I think there is a thoughtfulness and a cohesion that I don't think I don't think Dungeon Profiteer had that I wish it did. Okay, so let's go with Winner Magical Item Workshop and Runner Up Alchemy. Uh, we can put honorable mention. <laughs> yeah, totally. I mean, totally. I know that's like that seems. I, I'm, maybe that maybe that feels like cheap but like it's cheapening it but i still think it's a really strong game or oh, yeah. in that department or, or a second runner-up i don't know we're, yeah. well the point of the runner-up is to see who possibly wins if somebody graduates ah, but we're not saying all the losers it. suck or anything <laughs> <laughs> we're, ju we're just no, making the cream dungeon of the crop. profiteer was really oh, yeah. great it had a yeah, great it was. we wouldn't have argued the... about it for such a long time if, if we thought yeah. it was bad so yeah i mean so I'd... anyone listening we liked it it's just <laughs> how you know whatever we argued Okay. Do better next so, time. So, best dev, and this is a sort of a weirdly named uh, category, but this category is for recognizing anything that was like a clever mechanic or really well thought out gameplay. Um, something yeah. cool about the game that's not covered by the arts, audio writing yes. and art. 
Um, we were talking about Best of Dev, and we were about to talk about Pictomancer, which Snowshoe, you nominated. Tell me why. Yes. I thought it was just really clever. I've never seen a game use picked cross before, or at least not in a long time, and I thought it was a very clever way they implemented it as part of like the story and the gameplay. Uh, I... I don't think it's I, the best. I just I, think it I, was worth Yeah, watching. right, right, right. I have such complicated feelings because I'm like, oh, wow, it's Picross. And it, like, it like, took me a second to figure that out because I don't play Picross and, like, I've never really played it. Mm -hmm. um, so Neither that I. was really cool. And I'm like, <laughs> okay, so you got this, like, this kind of narrative aspect to it. I just don't think it was that well implemented from a, like, a legibility standpoint. Like, I don't think... I but 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 like I think the mechanic existing and kind of you know having something to do with the unfolding of the game itself was really clever. So mm -hmm. I think just in an, in itself that I agree that was innovative and cool. I agree with everything you just said and I liked the gameplay but the game was missing some quality of life features. Yeah, yeah, um, for sure. Particularly the ability to mark a um, square that you think would definitely not be the one. They did. That was right click. Was There was something missing, I know, when I was playing that I was like, I need this. Or maybe one you thought would be it. Maybe. Well, um, so when you when you right click it, it, it marked like, it as a, a question mark. That was it. Yeah. And that was like, no, I want to just say it's definitely, you know, not this one. Yeah. I understand. It's, it wasn't really up front and then you're like, oh, it did that. Yeah, but... it very much assumed that you know how to play Picross. Like, they did include a link to Picross, but I know that's not enough. Right. Yeah. But yeah, what was there? The puzzle element was, excuse me, ex executed well, so it's definitely worth a nom. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Um, sorry, I, I just like puzzles. I don't, don't, I don't say sorry. <laughs> You're a judge. Yeah, you yeah, get to do what you I, want. I totally. Yeah, I totally think it's valid. Totally. Okay. Yeah, it's definitely. I'm glad we mentioned it. Um. Next one is Nalem. <laughs> that was a really fun game. Uh, it, was, it was just clever. <laughs> it was the perfect jam game in the sense of it was small. Uh, it did like one thing, and it did that one thing really well. Uh, it's got that got that Harold Krell polish. <laughs> it has that trademark Harold yep. Krell. Yeah, trademark Harold Krell. <laughs> um, if if anything, I. I would like to see someone. I'd love to try it on different types of mouse, mouse, mice. Mm -hmm. um, just because, mm -hmm. <laughs> just because it was a little bit hard to use the mechanic. Yeah, for me because yeah. uh, my mouse kept like freaking out. It's like it's not drawing the thing, and I also don't have a real mouse pad. Um, and I don't know how it worked out for you. Well, if you saw on stream, uh, my cursor kept getting stuck. Same. Yeah. Yeah. Same. So that would be the major flaw of that game, I think, if we all experience that and we all use different kinds of mice. Yes. What are we What are we looking for in this category? So this is very nebulous. This is very subjective. This is a very subjective jam, and this is sort of something like clever, uh, or really good gameplay mechanic, or uh, something really well executed that doesn't have to do with. Well, I can, but it's not the focus of like art, audio, and writing. So in theory, the fact that Pictomancer's Tale, like if if um if I really wanted it to win just because I really like seeing Picross in a game, even if the Picross wasn't as well executed that, as I would have hoped, right. like that doesn't necessarily, it doesn't like qualify. that's, that's the sort of nebulous. Yeah. I mean, you can argue that for sure. Um, yeah. but this is sort of uh, recognizing achievements in dev. <laughs> okay. In developing. Yeah. yeah. In the sense of if something happened primarily because of someone devving it rather than the artist or, you know, whatever, this is when we talk about it. Okay. Oh, so we're almost like best programming? Well, we can't see under the hood, so it's hard to say. Right, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. Almost like I was... best execution. Okay. I had the wrong thing in mind. All right, I got it. Cool. Um, um, so that, to me, wraps it up about Nalem. So we could talk about workshop. I guess. Workshop. 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 <laughs> That's how I go. <laughs> Workshop. I... This kind of this kind of struck me the same way as Pictomancer did in terms of like 
there's a lot mechanically going on here that I admire, but I don't really know what it is. And I'm like, I'm like, I don't think it was that well executed, if that makes sense. Mm-hmm. Yeah, the same experience of I, I know that there's a great game buried in there, but I was not able to understand the developer's intentions yeah. enough to get to it. Yeah. Same. I mean, they they did say it wasn't quite finished, but I and I understand mm-hmm. they just wanted they just made it sandboxy and tried to to uh, articulate what was going to happen if the game had been finished. This reminds right. me of a very difficult lesson I learned uh, back with hashtag Everest, and that's there's such a thing as giving a player too much freedom. <laughs> yeah. Um, and so part of your job as a dev is not to give people unlimited possibilities, but rather the illusion of unlimited possibilities, because people actually have more fun when you make them do what you want them to do. Um, so, yeah. I, hmm? I knew this game reminded me of something in, in that respect, and yes, hashtag Everest is what it reminds me of. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, you, meta. Yeah, well, you know... <laughs> That game still won a thing. <laughs> yeah, I'm not. I'm not in a bad way or anything. I'm it's just like, yeah, like there's a lot of stuff, and and like I really like I can't wrap my mind around it, or I, I don't know. <laughs> I, maybe I'm too ADD to to really uh, dive into it properly. Right. Uh, yeah. No. I, I I'm not offended. I was the one who brought da- brought up hashtag Everest as the point of comparison okay. <laughs> of um, learning experience. Anyway, so. Yeah, I think eventually I'd, I'd love to see the dev keep working on it and uh, give a bit more direction there. So we lift it on the execution. Now the next one, I have a bit more to say about because the next one on this list is Alchemy. And that was a game that had a lot of clever stuff going on that they did pull off. Um, overall, that game, that, that game definitely had some flaws. Like it was very unclear at first what anything did or what you were supposed to be doing, but... Um, I think the first thing that stands out to me in terms of stuff that they did really well on the dev side is the combat. Yes. That felt really nice. Except I was bad at it. But it still felt nice even though I was bad at it. <laughs> yeah, I, just, I thought it was, the combat was interesting because it wasn't... You, you didn't know if, if you were really... I didn't know if I was actually in combat or if I was just kind of just like swatting them. Well, that would be a flaw you know I mean? for sure. Well, I guess that's a flaw. But my my point was is like, oh, it's just like I'm just going down in the basement to get materials, and I could probably <laughs> die. This feels like a wizard thing, very well. <laughs> and I think they had procedurally generated levels, which was neat. It was yeah. almost procedurally generated, almost. So like, basically, they had maybe like three different styles of rooms that just repeated in random order. I mean, that technically is sort of proc gen if you want to use a very loose definition of the term, which is just throwing together pre-built things randomly. Yeah, it was yeah. the um, it's the the spelunky style, right? Like um, little little prefabs put together. Now I need to play again. I think it was semi-random. Well, yeah, I think so. I think the yeah, it wasn't just like of... three rooms that repeated. It was it was like elements of rooms. I'm sorry to interrupt. No, I'm thinking. Yeah, I thought it was elements of rooms. I didn't think it was the same thing yeah. over and over. I'm I'm pretty sure it's the spelunky proc gen method. So we're okay. talking about Dragon Age 2 method of dungeon creation. Uh, <laughs> crisis, man. God. Dragon <laughs> Age 2. Why would you bring up that? That, that game, first game. That game does not win best dev. <laughs> it, does, it does not. Uh, does not. Uh, let's see. Next on this list is Dungeon Profiteer, and they had a lot of really awesome systems in that game. I was super charmed by the by the central conceit. I mean, like, the construction of stuff was kind of fun, even if it was not really <laughs> limited by any... Which which I think in some ways works to its... Uh, in its favor, that there were really no limits to the kind of insanity you could do um, in terms of sandbox. But the central conceit of you're out of control of this, but there's still kind of a depth of feeling, and you're kind of... It, there's a tension... Um, even though you're not really in active control of something. I don't know. I thought it was... I really liked that gimmick a lot. I agree, and I also... Well, in addition to the weapon building part, I think it was a... I I was surprised by how much I liked just watching the battles, because normally I'm very impatient. I, too, have ADHD, um, but the execution of that was done extremely well. Yeah. It, it got out of the way. Um, as soon as you kind of got tired of it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 
Um, and that game was, uh, the pacing was good, because when I was asking the chat, like, how many more of these are there? They're like, it's the last one. So like, oh, okay. When I was done with it, it was done. Oh, that's how, that was me. Because I, I, yeah, I'm like, is it, are we almost done? Because I really got to go. Because <laughs> I, I wanted to finish it, though. I really wanted to finish it. Because I, I was like, oh, I'm going to stream this to the end. Yeah. I, no, on my stream, I was doing the same thing. Oh, okay. <laughs> oh, that's really funny. We had a similar reaction. Because I didn't watch you play Dungeon Profiteer. Yeah. Um, and I don't know. I did, it was clever. Like, I think I mentioned back in the art, I thought it was really clever that they used the same assets uh, consistently. Um, it was a really pleasant surprise that how it all blended together into a battle. Like, we actually got to watch the battle, not just right. mm -hmm. not just have them make it. It's like, oh, I came back. It was so good. <laughs> yeah. There, there's an agency that you have without having, like, to have to do, like, some sort of Twitch skill-based thing with it, which I thought was nice. Mm -hmm. it was there's, almost... an, there's an accessibility oh, to that, for sure. Yeah. It was almost like um, a dungeon defender, where you yeah. build it everything up, and then you see if it survived. That's a really yeah. interesting comparison, but now that you mention it, yeah, I could see that. Yeah, for sure. Uh, I'm really excited to talk about Breakdown, which is next yeah. on the list. This game mm, is yeah. so tightly designed. It is very tight, yeah. Super well done <laughs> game. Like, uh, the only complaint I think I have is, like, I wish I'd see more workshop stuff spread out throughout the game instead of just at the end. Um, right. But as far as dev goes, I mean, this game just feels good to play. What was the yeah. end? Uh, turns out there was a workshop making the evil robots. <laughs> oh, that's what they were. Oh, I get it now. <laughs> yeah, no, they, they weren't people tearing their skin off. They were robots that were having a robot. I thought they just melted, <laughs> but I guess I was thinking more Terminator, and I just didn't, like, apply it in my yeah. brain. Um, I, see. <laughs> I I also loved the mechanic where, like, you, you really had to plan out how you were getting yeah. your parts. And it's like, oh, you, because if you didn't do it right, you you died because yeah. you can't attack. You yeah. so you it was a puzzle game in that regard, where the game was continuously teaching you new ways to interact with the systems that it had set up, which was very clever. It, it just mm -hmm. had a, a, such a tight set of rules that was so evident immediately. Just like, color changes kind of tell you what's what. You can throw one bone, and it has to destroy itself before you can throw another one. And it's just like, that was... It, it it just spoke a language that was very clear, which I think is awesome. You Termination. Can throw the bones. Well, yeah, not, well, not, yeah, not, not, yeah, your normal attack. They, those also look like bones to me. I don't know. Maybe uh, they did. I thought they, 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 they were bones. bones. They look like bones to me too. God. Termination shock pointed out, and I thought this was really clever. Once he did that, the first level of the game uh, is entirely on the screen, and it's only after yes. you beat it do you see levels that have a, uh -huh. a the camera that moves with you. So yeah. it uses that to like show you its mechanics before it starts giving you a massive level where you have to scroll around and walk around and see things. Yep, that was really nice. smart. Yep. So good point. It's good. I, I don't know what it says about me or the game, but <laughs> I've totally forgot that there was an attack in that game. <laughs> <laughs> wow. wow, you did a no hit run. <laughs> yeah, it's uh... impressive. You thought yeah. you thought it was the most difficult Pac-Man like <laughs> ever. I mean, that explains oh, why I didn't God. see the ending. <laughs> that reminds me, that game did not have a life system. Uh, it had a timer, but even if the time ran out, you didn't lose. You didn't get a game over state. It just it had two different endings, and that I thought was super uh, well thought out. I did now I need to that, play it actually. again. Yeah, I do too. Um, because I hate seeing lives in a modern game. Because it's like, okay, I can reload from save, so don't torture me with this. But, right. um, I mean, the game was pretty forgiving of if you die, you don't go back a level. You start at the same level. And, you know, you're not going to get into a groove where everything's going well and the game just says, like, haha, fuck you, you ran out of time. Um, right. I appreciated that. And yet time was still there as a motivator of, like, I want to get the best ending, so I want to do well. But, you know, it's sad when you're playing a game and you are having a good time and then it does just kind of kick you out. Yeah, yeah. the time was a very... Time was points in this in this version so it's like mm -hmm. the better time you got the more bragging rights you got yeah. kind of thing like golf <laughs> so many really <laughs> clever things about this game mm -hmm. yeah uh, let's see we've got magical item workshop 
And I'll say right off the bat, I really love the mechanic, and I'm not sure if it's original or not, but it doesn't matter as long as you did it well, of drawing the runes, basically. Oh yeah, he said he got it from some kind of online game where you make an avatar. This I can't remember. But the, mm. the drawing little designs yeah. to have effect, that was really cool. Uh, yeah, so definitely not a new mechanic, but it's one that I appreciate whenever I see it. In fact, I've actually implemented a, such a mechanic once, and it's actually nice. very difficult. So, um, props for sure. Yes, it. I'm it, it, oh, sorry. I was gonna say it's just another game where um, most of its systems came together extremely well. Yeah. I I just thought it was a very clever. Like it it was two parts. So like it was it was very clever. It took a little bit to really figure out like what parts were doing what, but like the rune like gave the power but the color was the power and mm-hmm. then whatever you drew gave it that power or less power or more power so it, it took a little bit but I just thought it was really clever how you could combine everything and then in the end I just used black on everything <laughs> 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 it is a game with like very clear you know um, objectives even if it wasn't clear how to get them which was part of the point of like oh now I need to figure out how to make this thing mm-hmm. um so that was good because you know it's it's always tough when you're playing a game where you're like I don't even know what I'm supposed to be doing now. <laughs> it it did um kind of a similar thing as Dungeon Profiteer where it it gave you hey I need I need something that does this and this and this but I thought the magical item workshop uh, uh, laid it out much better like it was a lot more obvious yeah. what, what needed to happen and you could go back and check what they needed mm-hmm. right. Uh, although that one was not entirely clear. They had to yell at me and stream about that. But it existed, um, which was good. And I think in the new build, which I haven't played yet, he put a... I should know this knowledge. He put a button right there on the main screen where you can consult it. And oh, okay. The blueprint, blackboard, whatever. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that that was there when I played it. And I, like I said, I hadn't updated that version. So. Um, hmm. We've also got here Super Giant Robot Cat Assembly, and that game is great because it's just a tiny game, and everything about its tininess is done well. Mm-hmm. It's very much a time-based game, though, because Although, it's like you, you have to do the timing just right, and you're like, fuck! It's definitely worth a nom. I don't think it's going to be one of our winners, though, because mm-hmm. it didn't do anything that jumped out at me as being particularly uh, challenging on the like everything was something I think all of us could probably do uh-huh. not that not that that's a requirement but um, I didn't I wasn't sitting there being like wow that was really clever it was just like wow this is really slick I did right. think it I thought it was going to uh, where we there was an old Microsoft game where you would like cobble together parts of rats and stations, <laughs> and I crazy. thought it was going to be like that, where I cobble together parts of cat cat mix, and then they go fight. It's That's kind not of, what it did, but it was still it was still fun. It's kind of a bummer we didn't really get to see what happened to the cat mix afterwards. But I guess within the scope of the game, what was done was done well. It's definitely yes. not one of the top three, but it was very very well done. Uh huh. Um, I think. Uh, and well, someone put spacecrafters. I put spacecrafters. That was another game of I wanted to mention it, uh, but it did. It did well. Um, you yeah. upgrade your ship. You shoot the guys. Um, it. I'd seen the mechanic of upgrading the ship that way before, so sort of the same critique, if it's even a critique, is uh, none of the dev in that game wowed me, but it was an appropriately scoped, well executed game. Mm hmm. And I don't, I don't know if you noticed when you died, but I think you lost parts as well. I didn't uh, notice. I noticed, I noticed I had to like, so as long as you were collecting stuff, you could re-add it. But when you died, your stuff went away. Like some stuff went away, but not everything. So you always, so you always had to make sure you were grabbing items in case you did die. Hmm. I'm like that was interesting, but it wasn't obvious. Like, you, like I didn't notice until like maybe the second time I died. Uh, so if I was going to nominate a top three in this category, in no order, my top three would probably be uh, Dungeon Profiteer, Breakdown, and Alchemy. Yes. Does anybody yeah. else have a different top three? What one did you pick no, again? No, I don't. My top three in no order would be Dungeon Profiteer, Breakdown, and Alchemy. 
Uh, and my personal top, what I would argue to be the winner, would be Breakdown. Hmm. Um. Yeah, I mean, this is where like the the um the vagueness of the category will mm -hmm. probably like throw a wrench in just the way I think about stuff. So. Go ahead and speak um, though. You're a judge, I, so. <laughs> well, it's it's like I think I think like something clever versus just a bunch of stuff that really worked well together I think is the difference between Breakdown and the other two sure. um, but like I don't know I, I think Breakdown is really solid and if we're just talking about like okay there's something really special and just the cohesiveness of this gameplay design um, as a whole then I think that's a totally valid uh, winner for sure how much are we emphasizing, uh, like, use of theme? That's true. If we emphasize use of theme, it definitely ah, gets yeah. knocked on that count. And probably since we don't have a best of theme category, that should be taken into account here. Yeah, probably. So, yeah, I could see it losing points on that. Um, if we were going on that, I would probably say Dungeon Profiteer and then Breakdown. I, I agree. Uh, sure. What do we think? Hmm. I can I can go for that. Um, I was trying to f figure out nail them just because like it was a clever mechanic just in general. Uh, but it wasn't. It, it loses I'm, points to me on the the execution because all of us experienced mouse issues. Ah, uh, good point. Okay. Yeah. Um, I'm okay with. Dungeon Profiteer, then Breakdown? Yep, Dungeon Profiteer is yeah. the winner, and then Breakdown is the runner-up. So I have here. All right, so now we're at the big one. Best of Jam, and this just meaning, like, well, the best of the jam. Just the whole the package. The, the whole package the is just really, jam. really, really good game. The best game. Um, so we've already talked about all of these that have been yeah. nominated. So why don't we just all go down and talk about the game or games that we think ought to win? Uh, who wants to go first? Not it. Not it. Okay. Oh, no. <laughs> uh... I would nominate Dungeon Profiteer as a winner because it's just... The game is... There's so much... Uh, not just in terms of content, but it's it's an experience. <laughs> an experience. Um, Trademark. I, I think I, I I agree, but just just because I found myself kind of nominating this for every category, <laughs> and I'm I'm like, well, I think I think maybe I in my bones I respect a couple games a little bit more for being more cohesive and kind of having like a, a better design sensibility as a whole but Dungeon Profiteer kind of surprised me in a way and used the theme really strongly and I think I would agree with that being my best in Jam um, but certainly willing to hear counters to that claim Spoon? Snowshoe? I'm so conflicted about Dungeon Profiteer because I think it is probably the best game but it also had a ton of people working on it and i know yeah that, but that's yeah. A, that's allowed in the rules i know i know i know <laughs> i know i know but but again like that like you know like you were saying there's there are there are smaller games that i think are kind of you know you divide the quality by the authors right do you right you yeah kind of it's a larger number or something that yeah really and, and... In sports, that idea is like pound for pound. So, like, if you have a boxer, it's understood that the heavyweight is the best. But honestly, like, most people measure the quality of like an MMA fighter by pound for pound. So, that, I I totally get that breakdown of it. It's um, I don't know. It's like Breath of the Wild is obviously really amazing, but there were a ton of indies that came out <laughs> last year that I'm like, wow, like moment for moment. I maybe there was stuff I liked more. Like hmm. I don't know. Well, let's hear about them you know. then. Um, I mean, I think I think like I think Alchemy really worked in a few ways. I think Magical Item Workshop kind of charmed me. 
and kind of in its like brief experience <laughs> and and breakdown was also just a really tight game um but but again like i mean i i put my vote in for dungeon profit here so i don't know if i really i think i'm just being difficult for the sake of being difficult at this point <laughs> i mean as the time uh my thought was i uh have never soloed a jam i have always worked with teams and having a bigger team in a jam scope game where you're working with all volunteers and it's not an actual job is not necessarily an advantage right um so because yeah. it's one of the, i could have put a stop to this from the very beginning and said like all right guys that's not in the spirit of the game you can't you, in the jam you can't have 20 people um and from what i heard it was mainly 10 which is still more than most jams uh but I thought that this was just as likely to end in failure on them than success. And from what I heard from behind the scenes, they were kind of running around screaming on the last day. Yeah, fair enough. Yeah, I don't... I I completely sort of remove any team... Like, I remove the team aspect because they mm -hmm. all made a decision together, whether it's one person or ten people. Mm -hmm. So, to me, the team size is irrelevant. They somehow pulled together a game that does work in some way, whether, whether you know, the aspects we argued throughout this discussion Also, if overall. we take into account things we know about the games that are outside the games into account in judging, then it's like, well, now we need to know the life stories of everybody who's made a mm -hmm. game. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Right. It is, it's still impressive, and that's a great. It's a it's a great mention that they were able to get so many people to work on it together. But as a yeah. focus, I don't know if Dungeon Profiteer worked out great. Great, like it had a lot of small elements. The combat, the or the autoplay combat was kind of neat. The the creation of the items were fun, but then they also at some point didn't matter because it's like just make anything. Cost doesn't matter. It's like oh okay. <laughs> I thought um, that was to the game's yeah. credit, but I see what you mean. If I was playing because it, game, it, I'd want more if it did, yeah, yeah. I mean, if the point was if they if it didn't matter, why put it in, right? Right. Um, and yeah. then, but then I also thought like the the world building was also very interesting and fun. It felt a little bit too long, but you know, like for what they had, if they had time to pare down a little more, they could have made it longer with shorter discussions. Right. Okay, so how about this? I think that we're all kind of teetering on Dungeon Profiteer, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Maybe Snowshoe is the kind of the most held out, right? Yes. <laughs> so, but but let's. Why don't we all talk about like kind of maybe in direct comparison? Like, why don't we talk about the rest of these games mm -hmm. and then kind of figure out? Okay, like for example, Alchemy, like Alchemy versus Dungeon Profiteer, you know. Like which which would we which would we do? Well, because I, I would pick Dungeon Profiteer over Alchemy as well. But also, then that just comes down to, you know, what did you personally enjoy better? Which I guess is, let's yeah, just I mean... say it without comparing it with all the other games. Um, but I would say if I wasn't going to nominate, or if I if I couldn't say Dungeon Profiteer, I would say Breakdown for just being an all-around cohesive experience that was very well done, except it has very poor theme integration. Whereas yeah. Dungeon Profiteer has one of the strongest uses of theme of all these games. Yes. Yeah, it does. Um, the only game that all four of us nominated was Quest in Progress. I ended Ooh. up changing my mind about that. I don't, I don't want to... Hmm. I'm not going to argue for that for Best of Jam anymore because... As I was playing it again, it didn't. I don't know. Uh, the with Breakdown and Dungeon Profiteer, it's not even about replay value because Dungeon Profiteer, as of now, is not super replayable. But there's something really arresting about the gameplay of both those two to me that Quest and Progress didn't quite have. Uh, yeah. I mean, I, I don't get like a ton of joy out of the moment-to-moment -moment gameplay of quest in progress i guess i i agree with that but i don't know i think taken as a whole i thought it did some clever stuff which is mm -hmm. why i nominated it um but i don't know i don't have a super strong feeling either way what about uh oh sorry snowshoe you wanted to oh i'm sorry um it was it was just the the thing that i liked the most 
for quest in progress because it did embody everything but like the for the integration of the theme it really it was just like it's a writing workshop that you get to play in <laughs> And that, yeah, that was I thought cool. that was cute. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. I don't and know. I thought that, was that really would cute. actually probably be more like in the best dev kind of category, maybe, uh, just because it did a very did something clever. But I mean, we have it for best writing, so I guess that would be yeah. Yeah. anyway. But my my point was like that was kind of the thing that I liked the most, and it did have really nice art. Um, audio wasn't horrible. <laughs> <laughs> audio <laughs> it was, wasn't it was very horrible. Good. It's horrible. Uh, I, I didn't break it, but you, okay. But we can move on to another game. Because well, uh, as it stands, I'm still favoring Dungeon Profiteer as best of jam. Um, yeah, I mean, I think the last thing we haven't talked about really is uh, the magical item workshop. I I really like magical item workshop. I just thought it was very clever it really fit the theme well mm -hmm. the the art was great the writing mm, yeah, it was funny <laughs> um but the the mechanics were just like the most fun because you really had to figure out like oh this with this this with this if there was a few more examples because i think there's only like five tests five or six tests before you got to the end um that could be fun, or even like a freestyle mode. <laughs> uh, a freestyle mode would have been really cool. That's uh, true, that's a very well piece. executed game. Yeah. Um, uh, I'm still thinking, sorry. I don't know so, if anyone else has. So, Shu, are you the only one that like would be like no to Dungeon Profiteer? I guess that's the question. I guess I'm the only reason I'm kind of a no is just because it was good, but I didn't think it was. Fantastic. That's okay. all. It, right. that, I think it's a great runner-up, and maybe it is a great winner. Oh, well, there isn't yeah. a runner-up to Best of GM. <laughs> oh yeah, that's right. In my mind, it's a runner-up or honorable yeah. mention. You know what I meant? <laughs> um, yeah, totally. I said just just removing any numbers out of it, like you know the people value. Mm -hmm. Um. Yeah. I was I was a little disappointed. I, I played it before I saw the stream, um, and I played it, and I was like, "Oh man, I can never I can never not make a profit." And then having that revealed to me to be you know completely True. arbitrary was oh, right. a little right. uh... mm -hmm. yeah yeah. I mean, I think I think that was disappointing in terms of okay, like if you're gonna set up this premise that seems to be that is being tracked, like it ought to matter and i think like the the longer i got away from it the the more it bothered me yeah so i can I, see yeah. that in terms of actually being a game that has objectives you can achieve and maybe not achieve magical item workshop yeah. would definitely i mean it's take it's it. also it's also in the title dungeon profiteer <laughs> like, <laughs> like if you're if you're like if if that aspect of it is a little bit taken out of the the, the way I am a, I like really I played it that day like that morning and then I did the stream I was like man this game rules and then like the longer I got away from it I'm like man it is bothering me that that didn't matter um, you guys have just so. changed my mind I'm now like throwing my support behind Magical <laughs> Item Workshop <laughs> um, the, I, I don't know about you guys I, I had someone die in Dungeon Profiteer and then they came back for the last battle which also... yes, they did. oh yeah that yeah, happened that, to me too oh wow yeah. <laughs> so there's just no consequence in Dungeon Profiteer which I mean right. for me Dungeon Profiteer I want to have a consequence for failure um, because right. all the systems were so cool there were all these stats and numbers and they clearly had a, 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 a combat system completely developed out and I mean there's something to be said for making an, an unlosable game in a game jam, but um, I think I'd rather see a bad ending state rather than no consequence. It, you know? They were almost undone by the fact that they had so much in it. Like, like if they did all of this stuff, it shouldn't surprise me that some of these things were missed because it's a lot of stuff that they put in in 10 days, but it's also a thing where I'm like, Okay, y'all may have skimped on the wrong stuff. Mm. You don't, you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, so I, I'm okay if it's like magical item workshop or uh, breakdown or alchemy or something. I don't know. 
Now, yeah, now, now I'm like, I don't know. <laughs> now, now, I'm, now I'm flustered. <laughs> now I'm like, I don't know what I would pick. Um, so I I've, I've been won over to the other side. So I well, what, right. let's let's read the room again. What what do you guys think about giving it to Magical Item Workshop? I mean, I I just thought it was a really solid game beginning to end, and the fact that there's multiple endings makes me really want to go back again. And if it seemed well and had great art, the audio <laughs> was great, except for the squeaks right. that you had that I didn't. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's that's also important. Is that I did play a version that did not have those issues. So I, yeah, I did really like it. Well, um, the only issue I had was the squeak. <laughs> that was my only yeah. issue. Well, Spoon, what do you think? I don't know. Um, because I don't necessarily, I didn't love Magical Item Workshop. I, like, I, I liked it a lot, but I wasn't super enamored with it. But, um, but I'm, I'm trying to, I'm trying to think what game would I personally uh, put up, and I am still looking. Because like... breakdown, I think, I think breakdown was kind of the best game, but um, it had very little theme. Yeah, so that, that kind of kills it for me. It, it, I think, of the games, if you're just picking the best game here, I would pick breakdown. But I, come on, you got to have the theme. Because how otherwise, I mean, part of it yeah. is like, how do we know that this isn't a game that you were just working on and then you just submitted it for the jam? Uh, which is, you know, probably not even true, but to satisfy my ego, if I threw a jam in the first <laughs> workshop and we all, all of us judges except for Floppy Doodle, pick this team together <laughs> and you are not catering to our egos. Hmm. And the, I mean, for breakdown, it could be. Sorry, I don't mean to throw this in disarray again. <laughs> <laughs> Breakdown, like the th the workshop part, could be you building whatever monstrous thing shoved through the doors. I like mean, you're putting the, the arms down. in a pile. <laughs> yeah. I know you put yeah, arms that's... in a pile and then it runs through. Yeah, through but that's the door standard the like level. graveyard that's what I mean. imagery of piles of bones. It's not workshop imagery. That's what it. That's where I was. Well, yeah. I mean, workshop theme, or whatever. <laughs> no, it, I'm like I said, I'm not trying to like devil's advocate but i am kind of like thinking about what they may have thought of as a as part of the theme and that could have been their could argument been. but i don't think it's a very strong argument for theme use mm -hmm. but i do agree that it was a very solid gameplay and it had pretty great it was a great experience mm -hmm. uh i, had... I think i'm mm -hmm. i think i'm on the magical item workshop train i, I think yeah. i am I'm all, I'm all right with all that. Board. All right, so that was a tricky one, but yeah, I think yeah, the winner of best of jam would be um, magical item workshop. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we've we've promoted a uh, breakdown to best audio, and alchemy to best art. Mm -hmm. Yep. Hey, that's awesome. I think that works out really well. Yeah. Yes. I, I feel Agreed. like super happy about this. This is good. Did we right. did we want to put runners up, or are we just going to leave them blank because they were moved forward? Uh, I think the, yeah, it's, yeah. it's that they, they are still the runner up. It's just that the runner up has become the winner. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. We don't we don't have just, runners, just up, double checking. runners up. Just um, double checking. Everybody everybody did a really good job, and they're all the runners up of the runners up. And... Yeah, this this was a really solid jam, by the way. Like mm -hmm. I, I, yeah. I, I there were a lot of things that I liked a lot, so. Everyone had a really different take on the theme, which was very mm -hmm. fun. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. But there's, I mean, several took the magic theme, and I was really surprised. I was thinking yeah. there would be more, uh, like, maker stuff. Yeah. Like, where you build electronical components, which could be fun. But no one did that, which I, which was interesting. So it could just have been <laughs> knowledge or whatever. But, a, but whatever people whatever people made was really fun. I, I enjoyed playing every game, even death metal. That yeah. <laughs> I I couldn't stream because I don't have I it still set need up to for stream my it. That was that was fun, except it needs more content and I kept dying. Uh but anyway I, hold on, we should when we're done, I want yeah. you to compare scores. <laughs> what no, I didn't get a very good score. Uh but anyway, so that, that wraps up judging. So congratulations to all the winners. Congratulations particularly to Magical Item Workshop by Team Woo! Retro Leaf, which won Best mm -hmm. of Jam. Uh, just wanted to say everybody who enjoyed jamming should stay tuned because there's going to be the awful summer jam in July. It's a month-long jam, and the competition's intense, so you should check it out. 
awfuljams.com. It's really cool. Anyway, thanks everybody, and uh, say good night, all you judge people. Good night. Good night. Good night. <laughs>